Welcome to the hidden secrets of the Grand Theatre in Blackpool. In this video we will be going behind the scenes and showing you the hidden places and secrets within this amazing theatre. The Grand Theatre opened on the 23rd of July 1894, built in just 9 months and at a cost of £20,000. It was the brainchild of a renowned theatre operator named Thomas Sergensen. The site was previously home to a row of shops. They were promptly demolished in 1889 and the land cleared ready for construction. It inspired the Winter Gardens to upgrade their existing opera house ready to compete. Sergensen decided to delay construction and instead built a circus on the site, all so he could see how well the opera house performed and make his theatre much more appealing. He enlisted the help of Frank Matcham who was a leading theatre designer of the time, who used some revolutionary designs and building techniques that were very unique at the time. It was known as Matcham's Masterpiece. It was eventually sold to the Blackpool Tower Company in 1909 for a very profitable £47,500 and stayed in their ownership until 1968. It briefly operated as a talking pictures theatre or cinema in the 1930s and throughout World War II. Blackpool was highly regarded as a safe haven during the war, and so the Grand only closed for one week. We will see evidence of the cinema later in these videos. Theatres were falling out of favour by the late 1960s, and many of Matcham's theatres were closed or demolished in this period. The same was on the table for the Grand Theatre too. It closed in 1972, and was due to be demolished in favour of a Littlewoods department store. Luckily the theatre had become a Grade 2 listed building the year previously. In 1973 it was saved after a public inquiry was held and friends of the Grand managed to persuade EMI, the new owners, to keep the building standing on agreement with them that they could use it as a bingo hall. Further money was invested into the building in the late 70s and Friends of the Grand had a 20-year option to buy the building. It was eventually sold to Friends of the Grand in 1980, after Blackpool Council and the Arts Council stepped in with further funding. It was refurbished and modernised upon purchase, and eventually reopened as a theatre in 1981 by the newly formed Grand Theatre Trust Company. It has operated under them since, and continues to have upgrades and restoration work carried out. It's now a highly regarded theatre in Blackpool, with many touring productions and shows running throughout the year. Fundraising efforts still continue to keep this fine theatre in the greatest condition, to keep it running for many more years to come. So here we are in the main auditorium, or the stalls area, and you've got the stage obviously behind me. I mean, this building is absolutely beautiful inside. Just check out that roof. It is absolutely stunning. Such a... I mean, they normally are in theatres, but that is very, very colourful and uh, immaculate, shall I say. Anyway, heading to the back of the stalls, and we'll give you a view looking this way. So there you go. This is the stalls area. He said it used to originally, this theatre hold over 3,000 people, but a lot of those would have been standing back in the day. Whereas today, it holds just over 1,000 people now. So not as big as it used to be, but obviously things have changed since then. So just down here, we've got the orchestra pit, which is covered over today because of the production, but if they require it, they just take this floor away and then you've got the pit down there. We will go have a look inside there a bit later on. And then you've got the wonderful proscenium arch all the way around there. If we look at the plaster work and decorations around the stage, you can see the 30 foot proscenium arch is divided into 12 sections known as spandrels, each representing a month of the year with its associated flower decoration. It also has two busts at each side of the stage, Handel who represents music and watches over the orchestra pit, and Shakespeare 
who represents drama and gazes over the audience. Above the chandeliers, you'll see a ceiling rose, and there are holes between, uh, like gaps in the rose. Uh, that is for natural ventilation. So when it was built in 1894, uh, ventilation was thought about. So hot air rises, and it would rise and go through those gaps, which we'll see when we go in the ceiling void, and out through the ceiling, through the roof. So here we are on the dress circle, which is the middle tier. If you look at the stage, or from the stage. And here's where all the royal boxes are as well. We'll go take a look at one of them in a second. So let's just head down here and have a peep into one of the royal boxes. So there you go. You pay extra for these. Nice little private box. And obviously if you get royalty, they would sit in here. Yeah, go on then. <laughs> so we're going to go see, you just said, where the royalty actually sat. Let's go look at that. This is the royal box. Prince of Wales sat in here uh, in 1981, uh, 29th of May, as you saw on the glass, uh, when it reopened as a theatre. Edward, Prince Edward, he's been here when he was working for the Really Useful Theatre Company. He sat in here. The Queen did not sit in here when she came for its centenary in 1994. Um, she sat on row F in the stalls, F2 and F4. Somewhere down there. Um, the view from the Royal Box is appalling. And the reason for that is because uh, in Victorian theatres, as I mentioned before, it's all about class structure. If you were in one of these boxes, you were here to be seen. So you became part of the, uh, part of the whole festivities. You can see, but here's the view. So like I said, it's not the best view in the theatre from here. It's more about these guys seeing you here. That's why the box is facing this way. Yeah, you can only see sort of half the stage there. So here we've got the Blackpool Pleasure Beach sponsored box. They support the Grand Theatre as well. So here we go. On the upper circle of the Grand Theatre. So you often see these little doors and wonder where they go. Well, that's where it goes, up to the fly room for the stage. Let's just have a look down here. So there you go, there's the main stage. And you can't see any of the scenery, obviously, up there above it. Uh, they're just setting up for a show, which is gonna be on this week. And there we go. And they've just said as well, they've gone back to the original colors in the theater. So the Victorian colors that you would have seen when it opened. This is the original colour scheme. So you've got the Utrecht blue, which is the official name for that colour there on the seats. And then you've got the gold. And there's the original red. And then there, just under here, look. You can see the original red velvet. Let me just get the torch on it. There you go. Original red sort of velvet of the theatre that they used for many years here. But this is the actual original Victorian colours. Just check out that roof. The amount of detail on that. So those of you from Blackpool will probably know that this was designed by Frank Matcham. He also did the Blackpool Tower Ballroom. So if you've been in there, that was his design as well. And quite a few other buildings around the country and in Blackpool as well. But this is his original design and it's one of the first places where he created a cantilevered seating arrangement in here so that you didn't have pulls or posts or supports obstructing views of people in the theatre. So you'll see what I mean down there. There's no supports on any of these tiers here. All the weight is carried to the back of the tiers and down the walls at the back. So it's a very clever design. And it was that popular, it was used in many theatres around the country after Frank Matcham did it right here at the Grand. So we're in what they call the gallery in the theatre. This section is no longer used, but they do use this section over here. So you're up in the gods of the theatre, as I would say, or the cheap seats. And these were known as the slips back in the day and the original leather seats apparently there with the dividers in between. You can get a close up of that amazing roof here, look. And then all the way down into the stage there. 
We've got some fancy plasterwork sculptures here or caryatids, as they're known apparently in the architectural world. And they appear, as you can see, to be holding up the ceiling. Now you may have also heard about one of the bad luck rumours in theatres where you should never whistle in a theatre. And apparently that's because back in the day when they used to operate the scenery in the fly towers up here, it was done by whistles. So they would change the whistle depending on what they wanted them to bring down from above. Obviously today they use headsets and radios, but they didn't have them back then. So it was all done with whistles. And the story goes, if you were to come into a theater and whistle, you may have a piece of scenery on your head. And the old phrase, break a leg, that also comes from these here. So you see at the side of the stage, we've got these uh, blackout curtains here. They were called legs. And back in the day, when they used to do variety acts at theatres, they would bring in acts, but they'd always have a spare act in case one of the others got injured. So what they would do is they'd only get paid if they stepped out beyond that leg there. So if they broke that leg, that's what they mean, not literally break your leg. So here we are in the fly room, just above the stage. And this is where they control all the scenery on the stage. So as you can see behind me, we've got the cables or the ropes here with these little levers down here. And what they do with these is basically they've got weights on one end and the scenery uh, curtain on the other side. And what they do is they just lift that lever up, which is a brake, and then they can just move them up and down. And because they're counterbalanced, they're so easy to move up and down. The weights are right at the top up there. And then the scenery drops down onto the stage all the way down there. Now you probably won't see it on the camera, but we are a fair way up now. I say a good 40 feet up. And so up there you've got all the header blocks. I believe that's what they call it. And all the scenery gets stored up there and then it drops down when they need it onto the stage. So it has to be the same height up here as it is down on the stage, obviously to hide it completely from the auditorium, which is that way. And just here we've got a crossover bridge just above the stage, as you can see down there. Uh, this is obviously used to get from one side to the other for the uh, fly area. But he just said that this ladder here, right in the corner, is the original access. Let me just get the torch on. That's the original access ladder up to this side of the stage because that bridge wouldn't have been here. So what they would have had to do is if they were leaving this side, head down that ladder, backstage all the way around and up the ladder on the other side instead of using these bridges like they do today. So here, let's just have a look behind this door. It's an old uh, wooden staircase there. And did you say it accesses the upper balcony? Uh, the circle, yeah. It's the upper circle. So you can see the door just there. That's how you get onto the upper circle of the theatre. You can see the old plaster work there. And you can see some of the plaster work in the auditorium just down there. Yeah, it's amazing. This is very old. This is the original behind the scenes of the theatre, as you can see. Let's look at the detail, even on the plaster work and the woodwork up there. So these are the original bits that you don't normally get to see. And some of the old woodwork down there and supports for the scenery. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Let me just read the inscription. Glass used by HRH, the Prince of Wales, on the occasion of the gala reopening of the Grand Theatre, May 29th, 1981. So his original glass, unfortunately, it's not in good nick, it's broken, but it's still in there. So we're gonna head over the uh, bridge across the stage. Now I am scared of heights, so this is quite scary, but I'm not looking down. Let's just head straight forward there we go. I'm not looking down, not looking down, not looking down. <laughs> I'm joking. It's not that bad, but it is quite high, as you can see. And this bridge wobbles. <laughs> now, apparently, so I was just moaning about the height of the bridge over there. We're now going to head up this ladder 
another couple of stories up there. Okay, let's go, all for the video. That's better. I'm trying to hold my torch and the camera, and that's not a good idea. So here we are, right in the roof space of the fly tower. So we've just climbed up that ladder. Whew. It is scary, that is high, but I'm not looking down. I just looked straight up, dreading going down there. But up here is where all the cables run for the fly scenery down there. And he just said it used to be originally all wood or timber up here. There is still some timber in the roof here and the supports you can see. But all this framework here now is steel. It would have been timber. And you can just see all the cables here, look, running across. So this is where the pulleys drag the cables and the scenery goes up and down here. So there we go, we've got the winch motor for the safety curtain on the stage there. So it's just said it doesn't need to be very powerful, as you can see, because again, it's counterweighted, just like the scenery. So it's just a little tug, gentle tug, to get it up and down the curtain anyway. You can see right up into the rafters there, and that's right on the top of the Grand Theatre, that's the roof. You would see on top of the fly tower, the original timber probably. There we go, there's a better angle. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's just in such good nick as well, you wouldn't even realise how old that is. Right, so we're making our way back down this scary looking ladder. So we're probably another 50 feet above the fly room, which is probably 50 feet. So we're probably 100 feet above the stage here now. Anyway, I'm not going to look, I'm just going to head down there. Join me in part two, where we'll be discovering more hidden secrets and venturing into places never seen before. <laughs>